Now that we've got our animation all set up in the scoreboard here, let's go back out to scene one and see how it works out there. Remember, I can just click on scene one or use the back arrow. Either one's going to take me back out there. And we can see we're right back out with our old timeline and our old layers. Now, as I move the playhead around, I'm not really seeing my scoreboard animation change. And that's because movie clips won't show that in another timeline. When we're looking at and controlling a specific timeline on the screen, the only thing that's going to show up on the stage is what's included in that particular timeline. So we're not going to see our animation change over here. That's actually true if we use the controls as well. I can rewind and hit play, and you can see that my clock's not changing at all. In fact, we can turn our football layer back on. Let me do a quick rewind and play again. And there we can see that the football is the only thing moving. Now, in general, what Flash does is it will show you the contents of the timeline that you're looking at. But there is a way to preview them both together, and that's using our test movie function. Now, that puts a little bit more importance on using test movie when you're trying to play back and preview your animations, especially when you have animations included inside your movie clips. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to just test movie in Flash Professional. And there we can see our clock counting down and the football flying across the field. Now, there is another problem. You'll notice that the clock keeps rotating. Once it gets to zero, it goes right back to three again and counts down. And what we're going to need to do is see if we can make that stop at zero. Let's close up our animation here. And we'll take a quick look at our timeline. Up here in scene one, I've got a lot of different frames. We can see that our football moves for about 100 frames and that the entire movie is about 150 frames long. Now let's look at our scoreboard movie clip. I'm just going to double click on it and we can see that the movie clip itself is only 40 frames long. So when we play these animations both together, my football is only halfway moving through the air and this first movie clip is simply just going to loop back to frame one and start playing again. With 150 frames duration, we should actually get a little more than four times playback of our time clock animation. Now we can fix that in a bunch of different ways. One very simple way, right here in this timeline, is to just add a lot more frames to this timeline. We need to go out to at least 150 or past there to make sure that this animation didn't finish playing and loop back on itself before the scene one timeline animation finishes playing. Now, that's perfectly fine. We can test that out. I'll just go and add 150 frames to this animation. I'll click on the first layer and drag all the way down to select all the layers and use my F5 keyboard shortcut to insert frames. Now, we've got a much longer timeline here, but it's guaranteed not to loop. Let's test our movie and see how that works. We can see our clock count down and when it gets to zero, it stays at zero. And my other animation finishes before it all starts again. So that's one way to fix it. Let me close up the preview. Now that's a little bit clumsy because then you have to count all of your frames and all of your animations every time you work. So what I'm gonna do is show you a couple of other ways that we can do this. The first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of all those extra frames. Now, we had our animation going out to frame 40 before, so I'm going to click in the top layer at frame 40. I'll scroll down to the end of my animation, and I'll shift-click, and you can see that I've grabbed that entire block of frames there, starting where my first selection was. With all those frames selected, I can just go up to my Edit menu, down into Timeline, and we can remove the frames. And now we're back to where we were before. Now let's go out to Scene 1. The first thing that I wanted to show you is we can actually use this as an example to see what the difference is between our graphic symbols and our movie clip symbols. We made this as a movie clip, but there's a feature in the program that lets us take a movie clip and make it act like a graphic or vice versa. So let me go into my library, and I'm going to pull out another copy of our scoreboard so we can see it next to the first one. You can see it says it's a movie clip, but this is a pull-down menu, and I can change it to act like a graphic. Now, basically what I have here is I've got one item acting as a movie clip and one item acting as a graphic. 
The first thing that we'll point out is that we don't have nearly as many properties for a graphic symbol as we do for a movie clip. And the one that's really missing for me here is 3D. In fact, the only thing that's going to get 3D properties is going to be our movie clip item. So that rules out graphics right away. But graphics do have one little advantage in the looping category. They have an option down here that allows you to set the graphic symbol to just play once and stop by itself. Now that's kind of neat because movie clips don't really have this setting, but they do have another way that we can work. For our example with the scoreboard, we're going to actually have to go out and find that third way because we can't use a graphic symbol since we can't get to 3D. Let's just remove this graphic symbol. I've got it selected so I can hit delete and we'll take a look at our last option. Now I happen to like the last option the best because it always works whether using a graphic symbol, a movie clip symbol, or even a scene one timeline. And that is, let's use a little bit of action script. Now it's not going to be hard because the program has a new feature built into it that allows us to retrieve stored snippets of code. In fact, let's pull that up first. I'm going to go to my Windows pull down menu, since that's where all my panels are, and I'm going to pull up the code snippets panel. This allows me to select code from some pre-saved options and apply that action script code to my movie. Now, we might be needing this later, so let's go ahead and dock this over in our tool palette on the side. And let's set it up. Like most things inside of Flash, action script needs to be set on a keyframe. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is pick out the point in time where we want to add our script to the animation. I'm just going to scroll back in the timeline here a little bit so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to pick a spot for our demonstration. If I move the playhead around, I can see that right around frame 50 is where the football seems to kind of pass right out of the edge of the scoreboard. Now I'll leave my playhead right here at frame 50, and what we're going to do is go over to our code snippets window. In the code snippets panel, all we have to do is pick out the action we want to apply. Now I'm going to try out a timeline navigation action. You can see that we have all kinds of actions in here that will move the playhead around to specific points, and right here at the top is one that will cause the playhead to stop. To add the action, all I have to do is double click and it will be dropped right at the current frame location. Now let's take a look at what the program did here. First of all, my double click added a brand new layer called Actions. The program has put a keyframe right where my playhead was at frame 50 and it has typed in this script right here for me, creating the stop action. You can also see a little A above the keyframe and that appears whenever you have action script attached to a keyframe. Let's go ahead and dock our actions panel too, and then we can give our new code a try. Now, first of all, I'm going to go up to the control menu, just hit rewind, and I'm going to hit play. And I wanted to show you that action script does not work when we're hitting play. And of course, that's just another reason to use test movie instead. Let's try that out. I'm going to choose test movie and flash professional. And now we can see our football kind of comes up, and when it gets right to that exact point, our timeline stops. Now notice that the clock timeline is still going. So when we set up action script, it's only going to affect the first timeline or the timeline we put the action script in. Let me close up that preview. Now you can probably see why I like it. We just place a little stop action inside of a timeline, and it completely controls that timeline only. So it's up to us what we want the other timelines to do. In this case, I might go ahead and leave my stop action there, but it's a little bit funny right in the middle of the animation. What we can do is we can grab that keyframe that contains our stop action, and we can move it around just like any other keyframe. And I'm just going to push it down here towards the end, and we'll set that keyframe up at the end of our animation. Now that's very useful because our football animation will now play through once, and from this point on, the scene one timeline will not loop. If we want to set this up inside of our clock animation, all we have to do is use the snippet to put the same stop action, but we put it inside the clock timeline. Let me just double click our scoreboard. I've already got the animation set at the end of the timeline, so let's just bring up our code snippets panel. I'll use the same stop at this frame action, double click. You can see it actually performs the same way. We get a brand new actions layer, we get the action placed at the timeline location, and it goes ahead and drops the same script in. Now I can close up this panel, 
and let's do a quick test movie and see how we ended up. There goes my football. You can see that the clock has stopped at zero. And when the football passes through, we can see that both animations have now stopped. Let's close that on up.